everybody. It is Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, but I don't see myself on the screen today, but there I am. <laughs> I didn't see you there either. <laughs> this is a live show, so sometimes we have little moments going on. Um, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, but today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint Little Red Riding Hood uh, on canvas in acrylic. Silent mode did not work today. There you are again. Silent mode did not work today. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know what it is. Um, so these are beginner step-by-step -step lessons in acrylic, usually much more organized than this. It's been a weirdly frazzly day. A little bit, yeah. But I think the lesson is going to be fantastic. Now let's go over the materials for this acrylic lesson. Um, this is an 8x8 eight eight surface, and I have the wish on it, healing and hope, especially for Jacqueline who has a family member going in for brain surgery. So that's always very scary. So we hope that that goes really, really well. Just so you know where the colors are on the palette, the oxazine purple, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, phthalo green, cad yellow medium, cad yellow ochre, cad red, and Mars black. We won't need too much of the Mars black. Shall we step one? It's so good to see everybody here. Yeah. So good to see everybody here. Did you want me? I did. All I right. did. So we're going to just do a really simple thing here. We're going to take a little bit of phthalo blue and burnt sienna together and paint the whole background this color. It's like a blue green. It's going to make a lot of our work easier later. Now notice in the first layer, it's streaky. I'm really just putting a depth of color on the surface. It does paint uh, the words in that I wish but really we were going to do this no matter what because it's going to make our finished painting look better. Acrylic can be transparent in some colors and creating a ground is one of those little tricks that's super easy to do and has big results. Get a little more brown on there. There we go. The more brown you have on the blue the greener it is the more blue the bluer it is. I'm going to go around the edges here. Kind of just make sure that if I were to frame the piece that um, this would look really good framed. A little more brown through there. Just deepen it. All right. Now, here's an interesting uh, thing to know. I paint Little Red Riding Hood often. <laughs> often uh, have done for years and years now and there's a whole collection of these so if you like red as a subject um, I paint her a lot I do have some wolf paintings and I am going to do a red wolf next year because that was so requested like we're ready for the wolf and I do have some with little bits of wolf in there um, or just a wolf but I'm going to do I'm going to do a, a wolf for next year so that we have that on our red story now are Ooh. you ready because we're going to dry this okay Here's your quick dry. Make sure we get that thoroughly done. And, and as you can see, it's kind of brushy there. That's okay because you just need to have that sort of dark undertone for the for the next layer. And as you dry, you'll see the sheen will, will go away a little bit. That shininess. Will... Almost done, I think. There she is. Okay. Dirt, dirt. That's really good. And step two. Breathe deep. Sip my coffee. It was a weird journey getting here today. Just a very, very strange journey. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You ever have a day like just certain things just went wrong and delayed your day? I had, I had Murphy's Law hit me hard today. Yeah, that happens. I've got radio interference all over yeah. this place, man. It was just wild. Like, you can't run the microwave and talk on your cell phone in this house. <laughs> it's super weird. It's so weird. <laughs> Things you learn. I put out a little more burnt sienna because I'm going to be using a good amount of it in the painting. Now you might think for this step that you'd want to use the traceable, but I would suggest that you hold off a little bit and visually divide in your mind's eye the canvas in half. Everything in the halfway part above is going to be trees and sky, and then everything really halfway down will be landscape. So I'm going to start putting in the sky. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab, this is a number 18 Artini hog bristle brush. It is.
You there? No, I've lost your audio. You lost my audio? Yeah, your audio is just cut out. Hold on a second. I need to come check your mic. Sorry, guys. I was I was looking around here, and um, yeah, no sound. Yeah, we lost the sound. So hold on a second, guys. I'm not sure what's going on. Let me check what happened to her audio. This is one of those things where it shows the connection here. It shows your audio in. But we did certainly lose you. I'm going to come over and just check you out there. And she's just brushing in a light, light layer, so sorry about that, guys. I'm I'm going to see what happened here. That This is just super weird. Hold on a second. Uh, do, do, do. She's going to make hand puppet gestures. Let me see if I actually what I can do is I can kind of, you can kind of hear. Do, do, do. No, no, it's, it's okay. Like your, your headset is not going to reach to me. I don't know why you're doing that at all. That's so weird what you're doing. Ah. What? Batteries dead? I'm guessing. You didn't take the batteries? You put brand new batteries in. Uh oh. But they were not good batteries. These just died, died. Okay. Let me just find there. I think oh, it's going to slide off. These pants are slidey. All right. I'll just yeah. put it right back. Yeah, you got to put it right back. They can hear you now. Okay. You can hear me now? Probably. All right. Hopefully. Um, oh, that's super tight. <laughs> Almost yanked my head back there. I think it was just probably tucked underneath. They can probably hear everything that I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Are you guys back there? Am I back? You're back. So that was a battery thing that happened. So you can hear me now, I would think. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? The Verizon dude came and changed our battery. <laughs> it was okay. <laughs> uh, so everyone's still catching up to where we are, so we're waiting to hear if you guys are catching sound on our side. Um, who messed with the face, says C. Blanton. Man, not me. I don't do that. I do not mess with the fae. I'll tell you that right now. They do mess with me, though. Well, you know, I can't. I can't be responsible for things that John does. <laughs> so, is this a step? So let's call this a step and start again. <laughs> I'm gonna try this. Okay. <laughs> now she's supposed to be quiet. There we go. Now it's all working. Sorry about that. That was weird. I put fresh batteries in right before the show, and it just went boop and disappeared. It even showed it had full battery. And when I went over to try to turn it on, it said no. So maybe one of the cells died or something. That's kind of weird. It was so strange. I stepped you. Normally, we have our kit together. But no, these are live. That's not and true. so sometimes. Well, no, this we... is very typical. We got no, something. No, no. Stay subscribed. This is not typical. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm taking my burnt sienna and my thalo green again over to my white. And this time I'm going to put just a smidge of my cad yellow into it and a lot more white. I'm going to come here and just give this another lightening up. I was said, it's, uh, John, ask Cinnamon what color she used during the light blue painting. The light blue top part? Uh, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, phthalo green. No. Should, see, you said blue. That threw me. It was burnt sienna, phthalo green, titanium white. No blue. Okay. The Sorry. blue word threw me. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Uh, <laughs> but it does trick look blue you. because it can feel blue. It's actually weirdly kind of a light mint. This time I did the burnt sienna, phthalo green, and a little bit of the yellow to even pull it into that mintier mint that we're going to have in our background. Because we want it to just be as light as we can. And that was a weird moment earlier. So sometimes when you're painting, stuff will happen. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just working this color into my canvas. I can always go back and kind of take it back and forth and soften it. But I'm wanting to definitely, definitely um, have it work into my canvas. Now, whenever I have my paint and it just feels like weirdly kind of streaky and not soft enough to me, if I take a brush, a soft brush, this is a number... This is a one inch oval mop. And if I just come back over, sometimes it can soften that up for me. Step two is the silent step. 
step two of <laughs> the quiet step. This is why the mini books are useful. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of mini books, why don't you plug that? <laughs> so after the show, about seven to ten days after the show, we release something called a mini book, which are written instructions with step-by-step -step photographs that go over how the painting was constructed. It matches the video exactly. So the step in the book is the step in the video. It'll tell you what brushes I used, what colors I used, and what the mixes were. So if that's something that would help you, Man, those are a resource, and guess what they are? Free. Yeah, because we love y'all. They are they free. Because they're awesome. You've you got to just love free, right? I do. Now, while this is still a little bit damp, I'm going to come in and kind of create uh, some trees here. I'm going to get back into my background, which was my phthalo blue and a little burnt sienna. But this time I might even get a little of my phthalo blue. So phthalo green, burnt sienna, phthalo blue, and some white. Because I don't want it to be the darkest value yet. I'm going to come, if this is center, I'm going to come over just a little bit off center. When I first did the digital design of this, I like left, I had a tree coming out of her head. I don't know what I was thinking. But sometimes when you sit with stuff, and you've been there a long time. I'm tapping up and down on the edge of this brush. This is a number six Simply Simmons. And you could do this very easily with the fan, but I don't have the fans out today. So I'm going to use a bright. And I'm going to come here and just tap down little branch shapes. I got asked the other day if, uh, you know, like, do I have, uh, what brush do I use for the trees? Believe it or not, there's a weird, and you can kind of see it when you zoom, zoom in on it, a weird little branchy brush. Huh. It does a pretty good job of doing that, and I rather like it. As I come down, it can get a little bit darker. So you can see I'm here, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, phthalo green. Coming down a little bit darker. And I'm going to bring it just past my horizon line. Flick out a little bit, kind of shape out a little bit of the branches. See, I'm bringing them out and then a little bit down to kind of talk about pine needles. Yeah. But again, as we go up, you do want it to be a little bit lighter so that it feels like it's in the mist. A little bit. And I can even bring some of that little mistiness down in that tree. Now over here, I'm going to want this mix. Thalo green, burnt sienna, a little thalo blue, and quite a lot more white. But it needs to be just a bit darker than the background sky. I'm going to just very lightly and gently kind of blend out a little bit of an implied shape of a distant tree. Yeah, we're doing this is just a light color, light value. I'm not going to take it much past here, but I'll make a little friend here that might be growing. You can also do this with a round brush if it's easier for you. I'm just flicking out little tree branches because these are little conifers. Just flicking those out. And then as I'm coming down lower, I can take my burnt sienna and my phthalo green together and make quite a dark color. And blend it into the light area that I have. So I'm blending that in. This is wet, and the new paint I'm adding is wet, so that gives me a chance to blend it. Get a nice little transition going.
Again, you can do this in fast order with a fan brush. And if you don't know how to use a fan brush, I have a whole series of videos with five minute tips about fan brushes. So it takes nothing to like pick that up. This is just one layer, just a little more brown here. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of imply a little bit more here, but I'll finish it out with a, with a more kind of neutralized brush. All right, come over to the other side. And this will be a little bit misty at the top and then darker as we go down. So I can go back into the slightly misty at the top. All right, I'm just flicking these little brush strokes out towards the right. And I'm letting the roughness of this brush, this is a hog bristle brush, so it gives me a very rough edge. So I can get like almost like tree-like little elements coming off of it just in the nature of the brush. And then I'm going to take phthalo uh, green and burnt sienna again together. And create a very dark color. Blend it up into here. And then we're going to add just a little bit of a friend next to it, so who's in the darker range entirely. I'm just bringing this down here, just painting in its basic, basic form. There we go. All right. Not bad, it's a start. Not at all. And we didn't have a fan brush. So, you know, you can do a lot without it. I, I very much uh, enjoy my fan brush, but you can get in with a bright. But I'm gonna show you an interesting finishing trick that I, I figured out does me a very similar like little pine needle effect. And I was like, yeah. oh, I can't wait to show you guys this. But let's dry this, okay. sip our coffee, and then come back for another sip. Coffee. Ah, the wonderful... I'm going to have to get a cup of coffee because I don't have a cup of coffee here. But I'll go get one here in just a second. Then we can all have some coffee. Wouldn't that be nice? I don't think it'll take very long for this. Get the little trees growing in the forest behind her. Okay. Hi, Joylin! Ready? Good to see you. Joy Lynn is is back. I want to say hi to Celtic Peasant and um, and Celtic is talking about uh, the abstract acrylic, which is the student brand of paint that I do recommend. I like that one the best of all the student brands of paint. Yeah. Okay, so what I have here is a tool called a three eighths. Yeah, this is a step three eighths filbert grainer. You could use a grass comb. You could use a fan brush again here, right? Or you could use a round brush and just work some details. So lots of options, but I want to show this one to you. I'm going to take my burnt sienna and phthalo green again, and I'm going to mix a little water into it just so that it's not quite as thick and will come off my brush better. I'm going to add little bits of pine needles. Look at these weird little pine needles. I love this brush. It does fur really good too. Okay. Now up top I might go back and add a little white so it stays blended. Look at those weird little pine needle effects. T 
deep breath. Now I like to make sure that when I'm doing a tree, I do these forward branches. Yeah. And not just the sides because it helps the tree feel a little more dimensional. kind of a little flicking brush stroke still but you can see it gives you little fluffy pine needles doesn't it yeah. what a fun thing it does and as I come down it can be a little heavier with it because I want the lower tree to be darker <laughs> if you can get a grainer uh, or a grass comb in your brush bucket. I highly recommend it. It makes your grass and your hair and your fur and your pine needles a much happier, easier thing. If you can't, do a fan brush. Can you mute me for a second? Sure. From outer space. A little more brown and green into this mix, right? Because I want to keep it quite dark. If ever, ever uh, you want to see like time lapses of the digital pieces come together, like when I'm designing, sometimes I drop those sometimes on TikTok, but mostly inside the patron group. Every once in a while, I will just record while I'm creating. Uh, not a voice, it's not a lesson, it's just a time lapse of what I'm doing. You can kind of see how it gets built in. I think it's interesting because in process, what's so different between painting traditionally and painting digitally is that I can create layers in my digital work and that lets me change my mind on something so easily when I'm not loving something about it but in acrylic you don't have that <laughs> as much right, yeah you can't like experiment try something in a fast layer then back out flip the layer out and try again <laughs> it's a uh, it's definitely not a thing um, if you like the look of this painting, I've got a Margaret Atwood inspired painting, um, on the Facebook page, not group, but the page, uh, for, uh, to see if you guys wanted to do that. So if that was something that you were into, I've got that coming up. <sighs> All right, let's, let's, uh, maybe... Come up a little bit. See how we're getting a little bit of that pine effect. Make sure I'm keeping it straight out there because sometimes what will happen is you get to painting and you're painting flat, so you lose your your straight lines. So it's really interesting. Sometimes I put up a, a poll, like I ask you guys, like I'll do design, and I'll be like, you know, is this something anybody would want to do? And then you guys like share your thoughts with me. Um, one thing I'd like to say, especially if you've seen the poll, put your thumbs up here in the group, or I guess the question. It's not as much as a poll. One of the things I'd like to gently remind everybody is that I know it probably doesn't seem like it's true anymore, the way the world has been so crazy, but it is okay to respectfully like or dislike things. <laughs> it's okay for somebody not to be into something or not to relate to it or not to be uh, interested as long like, look, if, if they're going to say something nasty, I pulled out some nasty comments. But if they're just saying, hey, it's not my thing for a variety of reasons, I think the most important thing we can do right now in our art community for each other is to make space for that to be okay. To be a fan of something or not be into something. I think we really, really need to make space for that to be okay. Because it's... You know, I don't ask the question unless I'm okay to hear the answer. 
Um, and as long as somebody's got a reason for it, I think those reasons are valid. Like right now we're talking about Margaret Atwood. I'm going to move the tree in between here because I, I spread these out a little bit too much and I want another little kind of balance here. So I'm going to tuck another little tree topper in. And the thing about it is, is that what we have to remember is that Margaret Atwood's book was published in 1985, which is a very different time from now. And um, sometimes when there's a TV show or a movie that comes up from a property, it will seem really relevant to the time, right? You know, and, and honestly, when books are good or stories are good, they will like, honestly, like if you think about it, 1984 is relevant past 1984. Animal Farm is relevant past Animal Farm. There's no time I'm not going to enjoy reading some Jane Austen. It's always good. Sure. Right. It will always feel like it's it has relevance in today's time. Right. But the thing is, is sometimes fan art is just fan art. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that everything hasn't gone like intense lately and doesn't feel like it's got, you know, different little elements to it. I think I'm going to bring a little bit down here. And so it's all right to just not be into it. You know, though I personally think of it like the yellow wallpaper of today. And it is a fantasy world. You know, it's okay for people to feel like it's relevant and it's okay for people to feel like they're not into it. It's okay. Totally. Let's commit to making that okay. If people aren't rude and they're not ugly, let's let's just let's just assume the other person means the best intention that they could possibly have for what they're saying. Like, read it with the best intentions. You know. I just feel like these are, I need to maybe drop one. I want more of a stair step there. But can you see that the trees are coming in and they have that nice little needly look? Yeah. I feel like that's just too much in the same keeping. I don't want them to line up that much. I'm trying to create variance, and sometimes what will happen is that, you know, you want some to be taller and some to be shorter because nature does that for sunlight reasons. Uh, I like the 70s, but the 80s were great too. Yeah, like, <laughs> man, I miss the innocence of that, like, Yes, I understand that we drank out of the hose because our parents weren't letting us in the house to use the good china. But <laughs> at least when I drank out of the hose in the 80s, I didn't have to stop and think about, like, the plastic in the hose and is this PBA free? <laughs> Where did the water come from? Right. I just drank out of the hot hose. There's I a lot could, of hoses. I could not drink out of a hose now. I would be too, like... What plastic did they use? <laughs> you know, it's just such a different time. The world just changes. Just changes so much. Lynn had a good idea. What was Lynn's good idea? I missed it. I'll have to scroll back up here and look real quick. Uh, uh, Celtic Peasant oh, is Hagrid like, that's painting. what... Huh? A Hagrid painting. Oh, I know. I... <sighs> Oftentimes what happens to me is that it's twofold. Uh, one is that an event happens, but the idea that would match the event doesn't come together. So like sometimes um, a wonderful, amazing, meaningful, inf influential celebrity will pass and the idea for a painting comes to me. But then other times they do and I, I just get stumped because like I'm emotional about it or... You know, and, and then by the time I think of something, it's past that time. But I love the suggestions. And I just don't want you guys to think that um, I'm not, uh, like, I'm avoiding doing the painting or I didn't like the idea. I love the idea. And if, an, if, if a painting comes to me, I'm fully doing it. But, I mean, I, I, I like, like, just even on The Handmaid's Tale, I read that book a while ago. And now I'm back watching the series in... It took me this long to even have a remote idea. Like, the ideas don't always come when we want them to come. 
like every year I say to myself, I need a wolf to go with red. And then I have no wolf. It's a weird thing. Even when I'm as, even when I'm as imaginative as I am, sometimes... The ideas just don't come in as quickly as I would like. Jessica says, I miss drinking out of the hose, running into flooded ditches, running barefoot outside all day. I miss the 80s. I mean, we had a freedom I don't think we understood. <laughs> like, I would never allow my kids to play in a drainage pipe. <laughs> I yeah. never, ever. No. I would never ever say to my children something as miraculous as like, I want to see you when the street lights come on. And not before then. Right. I'm like, this is me. Like, I want your phone on. You leave your tracker on. It's in your backpack. I need to know where you are. You text me every hour. <laughs> That's how we parent. But the I don't know. It's just it's just the world felt different. I drank out of a stream. Oh yeah, multiple like occasions. Fresh wild water. Yeah, you know, I would. There were there were, you know, going camping. We would go to campgrounds, and there would be a spigot in the middle of a field, and you would trust to drink it. No, like, but yeah, like a field spigot for sure. But like stream water, like with a cup. Oh, I know. Like, whoo, I drink it. Like I'm Diogenes, <laughs> drinking it. Weird Greek philosopher reference. Sorry. Just kind of, I want to kind of bring a little bit of that tree up. Sometimes I'll touch things over with my finger to like correct a thing. And now I couldn't do that because I watch uh, all like all the uh, Hank Green YouTube shows, like all the science ones. Yep. So now I know there's like brain parasites and liver parasites <laughs> can be on the fact that we polluted the water. I didn't know all the stuff that could be in there. All the time I, I like talk to my parents and I'm like, do you realize how lucky it is that I'm alive? What? <laughs> that any of us are. It's true though. Yeah, a lot of people are saying in the chat that we just had a freedom like no other. Yeah. We really did. And and one I don't, I mean, I'm sure it came at a cost and, you know, it was definitely a thing. And I think it was a unique time that we could even have that freedom. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, all generations have a thing. You know, it was at a time when you would say things like, your parents would say things to you like rub dirt on it. Shake it off. <laughs> Shake it off. Are you bleeding? How much are you bleeding? I think it's <laughs> how much blood <laughs> is it like a lot of blood, like a cup of blood, or is it like a little blood? <laughs> do we need to go to the hospital or are you going to be okay? <laughs> yeah. Do we need to go to the hospital? You know, that's not necessarily always good. I remember like I had, I had some injuries that probably did need the hospital <laughs> that I didn't go for. <laughs> Cause like, you know, assessing your own major wounds, mm -hmm. not a wise thing. So I'm just continuing this down. Sorry, guys. I'm just kind of chatting while we're getting the little trees in, and I apologize for that. That's okay. Mm, I've got one more little tree thing to do over here. I want to kind of imply a little forward tree where I come forward. Uh, I might get a little cad yellow into this mix right here which is my burnt sienna and phthalo green and then a little blue i mean a little uh a little titanium white i'm gonna highlight like just a little bit of a tree right here I just add a bunch more white to the mix. Put a little branch here. Like you do. See how we're creating a little bit of a forward tree?
That's a little bit of a forward guy. Yeah. He's just there. He's just he's just here to give the, the forest some depth. A little bit of depth in the forest. Mm -hmm. All right, let's call that a step. <sighs> school nurse called my mom and said to take her to the emergency room for an x-ray. That's a good, that's a good school nurse. This is a good school nurse. <laughs> my school nurse was a shake it off school, school nurse too. <laughs> she was definitely how much blood is there. <laughs> you know, like if you could count fingers yeah. and sort of stay on your feet, they didn't call your parents. Uh -uh. You needed to lose consciousness. That's when they called my parents. If I lost <laughs> consciousness. Yep. Can I have a, a heat up of my coffee? Yeah, I'll get you that here. So while we're waiting on the staff and John's doing my coffee. Hmm? I stepped you. Okay, then we'll go on to the next thing. Let's get back into our um, eight, number 18, hog bristle bright. You could use a number eight Cambridge. And I'm going to mix a little bit. I'm going to take this green color I've been using. The little bit of yellow in it and the brown. It has been destroying everything. I might be asking John for something he should not be providing. And I'm going to do little upward strokes. Now, the lighter area of the uh, grass and field is going to be centralized, and it's going to have kind of a vignette around it. I just added some yellow ochre in. And I'm just being rough. See? Just sort of filling that in. And get a little more burnt sienna into it. And what's great is there's a dark basis under here, so it's keeping it very, very dark. Thank you so much. Oh, we got one of those little weird spammy... Oh, no, they got it. The mods always have it. That's what the mods... The mods are not here to silence you. They're just here to catch the weird, like, sex bot spammer. Who is, like, totally not targeting the audience. I'm not saying anything about you owning yourselves and all that. Because, like, it's okay and, and you're allowed to have your adult life. I'm just saying, I don't know that we're its target customer. I think it's more of a Bridgerton crowd here. <laughs> I could be wrong, though. I'm making an assumption. I'm taking my burnt sienna and my uh, thalo green. Um, like, the only way you'll see me having OnlyFans is if I decide to paint, like, news or, like, joke things. Like, you know, birds that have dirty-sounding names. That would be my OnlyFans. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not, like, even of an age or time when I would have to actually even worry about that or do that. All right. So it's the burnt sienna and thalo green around the outside. Burnt sienna, thalo green, and a little bit of cad yellow or yellow ochre on the inside at this stage. Yeah. Oh, Catherine didn't even have a school nurse in the 70s and 80s. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, Mary Stebbins wants to know, why, can you say why you did blue on the bottom? Actually, we did the whole canvas blue. And it was not It was a mixture of burnt sienna and thalo blue, and that helps create depth so that colors like thalo green and thalo blue and burnt sienna and yellow, all of which are a little bit transparent, actually use the color underneath to create depth. It's a weird trick. Works really great with student paints, too. So sometimes if you know a little bit about color theory and the way the paints are, you read the tube and it's like, oh, it's transparent. Then you want to think about what's underneath it because it's going to show through. Amethyst Rock says, really, go away, stupid sex box. We're painting. Now, if a good marketing company were to do this and it was like it was to come in, it was like super sale at Michael's right now, we wouldn't delete those at all. <laughs> We'd be like, where's the sale? I think it's just they're not... For all the Google research that's out there and, and they know everything we do, you know how the ads track you, you think they would know 
they would know who we were. And hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you step? Poor John, he's just trying to get a cup of coffee. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep going on. I'm going to stay in my n number 18 hog brush for a little bit longer, but now I'm going to get into some lighter colors. Take your green mixture, which is your burnt sienna thalo green, and it's okay if it had even a little yellow ochre in it from earlier. And we're going to get into our... Um, yellow ochre yellow oxide and we're going to start making short little grass like strokes and lightening up this area into dry grass i'm going to take this into the dry grass see how we're going into the dry grass what you saw me doing is working the pigment through the brush so that I didn't get pops of bright phthalo green coming out because I don't want those right now. I'm going to bring a little bit of this over here to the right. These strokes are about a quarter of an inch long. And I don't want to lose my vignetting here in the center of the grass. So this is just layer two of this. Can always get a little more green here on these downward edges, right? I want to leave this a little bit darker right here. Now, as I'm coming through here again, I haven't rinsed my brush. I'm going to add a little more yellow ochre to it and I'm going to get some white. And I'm making lightning little marks here. Maybe a little more yellow ochre over here towards the side. See how this kind of creates little patches of grass? Not fun. Maybe a little more yellow ochre right there. See, natural grass or fields, they have, no matter what you do, they're going to have a lot of color in them. That's just going to be true. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and put it in the mix for over here. See how we're putting a little more kind of brown in that grass right there. I see it. And I'm not painting out everything that's underneath. I'm allowing it to kind of weave together. Kind of show through. Every once in a while you will want to rinse out. Grace Porter says, we didn't have anyone checking on us in the playground in my time. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> no one's watching the playground. You get on the merry go round at your own risk. Taking a little bit more of that, I might come over into my white. Adding a little bit more green into that. Some lighter spots, perhaps. I don't have to worry about too much here. This is just a nice place for me to practice in here because my figure is going to be there. So I'm pretty good that way. Sometimes I might get a little more yellow ochre into a couple spots. Adding a little bit of brightness there. Into our little bit of green. And I can even come into my cad yellow if I need to warm that green up. Isn't that great? Yeah. So if it's just feeling too uniform, you can paint a lot of different greens. And so even if it is green on green on green, it can still look very 
complex. And get a dark color, a little bit of my burnt sienna and thalo green and make sure that I have some of that down here. I can even come in and like make sure that I've got little bits of sort of dark patches in the field. Coming through there. That's not bad. Not bad at all. No, not at all. We still need to lighten the value up in here though. So I've rinsed out my brush and I'm going to take my burnt sienna and my phthalo green together. And then some of my cad yellow. A little more burnt sienna into it. See, it gives kind of that summer grass color. And I'm going to add a lot more white into that. A little more yellow back in. Just trying to make sure that we have an area in the field that's light enough. See how that's a shade lighter than everything we've done so far? Again, I don't have to be too worried about right here. Just want to be sure. We've got nice light grass coming through. All right, how are we doing? I think pretty good. Oh, well, if you brought donuts, you can always be late if you bring donuts. Okay, so we've done several little green mixes here. It was our burnt sienna, our thalo green, our ca uh, cad yellow medium, and also our yellow ochre. And we alternated between those mixes, one heavier on the other, and added little bits of white to get where we're going. I'm going to say, put up another step. Now I'm gonna take the same brush that I did the trees with. This is the grainer. I'm gonna get a dark color. And I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, interesting long grasses to this. See how we're doing? You could use a fan or just uh, any little brush that you like doing your grass with. What you're going to want to know is that closer to you, the blades are longer and more defined, and then further away, they're less defined. I thought a lot about how to translate, again, these digital techniques into the acrylic paint. Like, how do we do that? Because I very much enjoy um, the look of all of this. Also, it lets me design while I'm watching TV, which John can attest to. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it makes everything all easier. Well, and you can make changes like this year uh, for my holiday series, I wanted to make sure that I had um, a uh, um, Hanukkah and uh, I think it was a... Uh, I'm going to make sure I'm right. The Festival of Lights, the Wally painting. And so, uh, but those are not, you know, religions that I'm personally like super versed in or familiar with. So I was able to post the Hanukkah one up in my patron group for naming. And they caught like a mistake I made that it was just something I wouldn't know. And made sure like it was correct because I do these so that they're correct so people can have fun. And uh, I was pretty happy with it. 
So it's like great when you guys can give me like feedback. But the other thing is like when you start with that digital design, you can just make those changes really simple. They're like, oh no, biggie. Yeah. Make a candle. I need to make. I had to make one of the candles longer. I had the right number of candles. <laughs> it's just not. I I did not know one of them needed to be longer, and it was just something I did not know. And um, no big deal. I didn't have to repaint or anything. I was like, I can just do that right now. So another another painting. Now, when I have that dark color in, right, which is looking pretty good, making sure you've got little blades right here and there. Rinse out. Choo, choo, choo. Uh, I'm getting some compliments on my beginning videos. Oh, and some other people did not know that about the candles. Yeah, I knew there needed to be nine, but one candle has to be higher than all the other candles. And um, so I was like, okay, I can totally do that. Yeah, and just a little adjustment. I'm going to get a little more yellow into the mix that I have over here, as you do. And then some white. I'm going to add a highlight. Oh, is it yard day too? Of course. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> my mom's personal life schedule is very different than mine so all her services are booked around her life schedule and filming schedule and so uh my mom would not be filming her live right now <laughs> we're all right though <laughs> we're fine you just might hear the grass get mowed i'm just adding some pieced out long grasses right giving it that feeling Oh, uh, Lynn's like, my sons are like, is she still painting? They want me to serve up soft caramel cheesecake. Yeah, they've got to be like, look, a TikTok video is one minute. What is taking so long? <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know, that's got to be like the deal. I'm going to grab a little bit of my cad yellow and uh, yellow ochre and make sure that I've got some golden little bits of grass too. Nice little upward. This all makes a difference. Bring a little bit of the grasses back here. It's sort of relaxing, isn't it? Get a little bit of the burnt sienna. Now making sure there's a little bit of burnt sienna in the mix coming back. A little brown that grass, those grasses up. Yeah. Damn, he's like, I'm hungry now. <sighs> Look at that. So now we've got a nice little field. Let's dry it. And this, and the next step, this is when you would either draw your red in with me or use the traceable, but you want your surface to be dry. Just get it thoroughly dry there. Mm -hmm. That won't take but a moment to get that dried out. I just didn't think it was, you know, just little grasses. They don't take very long, but if you don't get them thoroughly dry, then they can get a little muddy between the steps. So it's good to just get them thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly done. Okay. All right. Ready for your step? I'm ready for my step and a sip of my coffee, I think. There you go. I don't know who has a birthday, but happy birthday. And hi, Donna. Now, the nice thing is, is I can sketch my red in. I might do a little bit of chalk and then come in with paint. Mm. If you're doing the traceable, do do this now. The important thing is just remember to place the traceable where the feet are about 
an inch up from the bottom. And the head comes almost up to the top of the trees, okay? So she takes up a good amount of space in the surface. I'm going to sketch in the hood because is little red writing hood. Little shoulders coming off, so it's kind of like a little shoulder coming down. The nice thing about doing it in chalk first is it lets me really make a decision about scale. And then I can come in and kind of work it out then again in paint. But with not without having like given myself some guidelines. So I'm going to start mine with uh, Diox Purple and Cad Red. Those are the darkest reds in my red. So I'm going to come up here. This is a number four round. It's just a nice brush for the sketching of this. Bring that little corner out over here and it comes back down a little bit of fold in the cloak there I liked doing the fuller sleeves this time yeah. that was sort of fun for me is having the sleeves Hopefully I can catch those fairly well. All right, so we're getting that in. Now, when I have my paint on, that, that'll let you see kind of... Um, actually, I think this should come in a little bit more there. little bit of a bell out here. Fold of the fabric there. I wasn't very off with my chalk lines at all. So a little fold of the fabric out there. Now the feet, ugh, they're going to be a thing because it's the heels. That's always a weird thing when you paint the legs from the back with the heels. In some ways it's easier. In some ways it is not. I'm going to take my Thalo Blue and my Mars Black. And my advice is, and if this gives me any grief, I'm going to switch to a smaller brush, is to put in the two heels next to each other. I'm going to bring a little line in here. Bring a little line in there. Just making sure that, um, so let me change that. See, I was able to change my mind. <laughs> if the painting underneath is dry, you can totally do that. I am going to switch to a smaller brush that I have just tons and tons of control over. This is my number one liner from Princeton, and it just really lets me have a lot of control. And I maybe even want to have them closer together. Do you love that to see that you can just undo and redo? I love that about this. So if you're ever like, how do I undo a black mark? That would be it. I definitely want to make sure that some of the landscape shows through these legs. All right, now where I imagine my ankles are going to be, if I put them there, I need to taper to the ankle and widen out for the calf.
It is super easy to thicken the leg, hard to thin it, right? So that's why you see me proceeding sort of close, like, like slowly and cautiously. Right? And then bring the heel out a bit. It's not too much of a bend on it. I'll know it pretty quickly if it is. What's great is that once you get the initial silhouette in, it comes in with a with a little highlight shadow fairly easily. So that's, you either got the traceable in of red or you sketched in with me wherever you're at. When we come back, we're going to proceed on painting in red. When we come back, you mean do a step? I'm step. Step it. Step in it. There's a step. All right, so I'm going to take a brush. This is a number four Isabay Iskril Filbert. I like a Filbert. I like a Filbert because it gives me sharp edges and lets me fill in large places and just a little more control than, say, a bright. I'm going to add a little red to my mix and kind of make my deep red color. And I'm begin filling in the coat. It's okay to leave the slightly darker purple line a couple of places if you need it to know where things are. You don't have to, but it's okay to do that. It's okay to leave a little bit of your tracing line in if you're not sure where objects are going to be once they're painted in solid. We all have strategies to not get lost in a painting. And kind of bring this here. So we have nice flare on that coat, don't we? It's taking up a good weight in the room. And I like that. And then we'll come up and hit the head up here. Let's get some nice color on there. Well, all that is having a little bit of a dry. I'm going to rinse yeah. my brush out. And I think I'm going to mm, I'm going to use another small brush that I have a lot of control with and then I've got these two so I'm going to use my quarter inch angle brush. This one's by Catalyst Princeton. Any brush that just gives you control is what you're looking for. Right. That you feel like you've got great art control on. Now, while that is still uh, wet, sometimes what I like to do is I'm going to come in and get a little blue and add some white to my blue-black. Get kind of this interesting cool gray. And I'm going to add a little highlight to the back of the shoe there. Yeah. A little bit of one right here. Now 
a little bit to the outside of that leg. Now I think that one highlight got a little big. So I'm going to rinse out and come back with a little bit of black. Just tone it back a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's what we're always doing is we're just kind of playing with those little bits. Going to just a little bit. Dark, like it's a it's a highlight, but it's a dark highlight. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can always kind of come here and again, like I said, it's it's hard sometimes to thin it, but if I have to, I can come back with a background color. Or make sure that it is. Not too, it's little touches of highlights on shoes. Like I'm going to highlight, um, this is like the sole. You're painting her soul. At least the soles of her shoes and then paint a little bit of a reflection on the back of them. So we just know that it's the back of her shoes. Those are the creepy statements you have to save for Halloween. You walk up to someone, I can see your soul. <laughs> of your shoe. The world's decided to be so creepy. I don't even need to help it anymore. See, I'm, I'm, I like mild peril. Like, you know, <laughs> Crypt Keeper is my level of the perfect bad guy. Did <laughs> somebody reset the rating to the world? I'd like to get back to a PG-13. You know, <laughs> I prefer my monsters are full of puns. <laughs> you know? There we go. So we've got the little highlight. See so what? Little shadow, little highlight. Yep. Very subtle. It's a subtle thing. If you find you're tweaking it, that's not unreasonable that you are. These things require some tweak. Let's call it a step because it was a lot to take in and those legs were a lot to do. Tammy Edwardson, it takes longer to be a follower than the creator of a painting. Hashtag truth. Even for me, it is harder to follow along than it is to just do the painting because you're having to pay attention to so many things. Remember, it's okay to pause me. It's okay to rewind. It's okay to just like uh, be like, okay, I'm going to be back in an hour. Enough of you. <laughs> it's all right. I'm going to take a little bit of my red and come over to my purple. And it's just a slightly brighter red than I had. And I'm going to shade just from the outside in. And then across, and it's kind of a dry brush. So I'm leaving some of that darker purple. I don't take it all away. This isn't my brightest red. I have many ranges of reds. Gonna paint a little fabric folds in there. And that's important. You pay sort of pay attention to like where does the fabric fold? <laughs> if you like this, I did a very involved kind of red snow white in the snow, just the cloak, lots of folded fabrics. It's a long class, but it's a worthwhile class. So I'm just adding a bit of a hot one highlight to the outside edge of that coat. Bring some uh, highlights kind of up here and where the coat wrinkles. So the high point of the fold is what has the highlight. A 
All right, it's just continuing over. Doc's purple and a little cat red. All right, a little bit of shadow there, still leaving a little bit of a shadow in there. The coat just starts to develop. This is by no means the brightest part of the coat. So you've got room to lift it up. As I go forward, I'm going to continue to add a little bit of red to my dog's purple. And then right across here with that. It's not my brightest red by any means. But it's brighter than what I've used up till now. I'm folding the color. I'm leaving little shadows there. It is if you haven't painted folded fabric and it's taking you a minute to get it and to see it, don't feel like, you know, it's just you. The reason that you go to school and study art is because you're actually studying. <laughs> you can do home study. You can homeschool your art. That's completely fine. But that's why you go is so that you, you do things like just paint a bunch of still lifes. That's, that's what the teachers kind of basically do is they have you study and observe the things that you need to know so that you can understand how the fabric folds, right? Maybe you go on to fashion art, but if you're going to do fashion art, you do got to understand how the fabric folds. See how we're catching these highlights? It's just amazing how it just starts to come through. Now, it's definitely a brighter red than what's there, but I don't want it to be the brightest red I have, and that's because some of this coat's in shadow. So I'm gonna take some of my bright red, but I'm dry brushing it on here. Right? I'm letting a lot of the surface that's underneath show through. I do all this painting just to get to the cloak, I swear. <laughs> it's true though, I do. Now I'm gonna get a lot more red on my brush. on that outside edge. This is almost my pure CAD. Just touching that and kind of highlighting that wrinkle. If I need the next color to be bright but not as bright as the pure CAD, then I just come in and until I capture that. A little bit bright red there. A little bit of bright red there. Needs to be a shadow, but not quite as deep as I have it. So then I just come back and add a little purple back in and that softens that fold. I can go right back into my CAD. Pretty heavily right here. A little bit of a curve to the stroke. To sort of show that highlight. Look at us go.
Now, I did not talk about my wet palette. This is a Masterson Stay Wet Palette. Um, and it just keeps my paint from drying out so fast. I mean, it's got a sponge underneath here. And this is a special paper that holds water. And it allows me to paint for a much longer period of time. So a little highlight right there. A little bit on the outside right there. And then for sure, I'm going to come back and I'm going to mix my purple back in, but this time it's a little more half shaded with the reds so that when I come in and do the shadows, they're not so purple. A little bit under the hood here. See, so I'm taking the purple out now. Yes, the purple was guiding me, and that was very, very good. But sometimes you'll find that you've got to just kind of pull the red back in. Because it just got too purple. And then I can always come back with my red. So you can smooth anything out. Add a little bit of a highlight there. I just liked it. Oh, I think she's got a nice little red coat. A little bit of red. I like that her coat kind of gathers. I want to exaggerate that some. Okay, so we've got a nice little coat. Ah, oh, that's a lovely little thing. Now we need to make some little red flowers around. So let's call this a step. Okay. And we'll come back and we're going to add some nice little flowers. Eleven. Okay, I'm back into this interesting grainer. And I'm going to go back into my dark green. And I'm going to make sure that I have some nice grass that kind of goes around her shoes, right? A little bit, something a little brighter right there. Just kind of catching a little, little more elements. I'm going to, I think I'm going to do this with my number four round and then I'm going to come back with my one liner. We're going to take the Docs purple and the Cad red and make a very dark red. And we're going to kind of do little blups yeah bloops bloops our flowers are bloops that makes sense they're little bloopers i like to put the flowers in before the stems because i don't want the stems to deck dictate uh where the blooms go because they're such a strong element in the painting You want some of your blurps to be big and small. Don't make them all the same size because flowers are turned different ways. They're hidden in the grass. If you did the uh, big art, not the big art quest, the acrylic April. I am so tongue tied today. I just want you to know that I know that. It's a weird tongue tied day.
Put a little bit of that out there. That looks good. I like that. Siobhan says the Stay Wet palette is great, and I have to agree. And Vicky Bresco is giving us a heart. Thank you, Vicky. Now I'm going to take my Cad Red and my Cad Yellow. And I'm not really making an orange. I'm just brightening my Cad Red. And I'm going to touch one side of my flowers to create highlights. I don't paint out all the dark because that would undermine what I was doing. Sometimes you can touch them twice. It makes like different petals could be highlighted. Yeah. Just capturing some like little flower elements. All right, those are looking pretty good. I'm going to get my number one liner from Princeton. I'm going to go ahead and thin out some of my Thalo Green and Burnt Sienna, but I'm also going to get it into my Thalo, um, my Mars Black, because I want a really dark contrast here. What I got to do is just make sure that the paint is flowing off my brush and sometimes that's about loading it up on the toe and thinning it enough to do so. Making little twiggly bits. A little bit by her skirt, little elements, right? It just imply nature some. Fine lines, fine line up and then branch over here, branch over there, let them branch out, come on, light pressure. Pulling away from myself, doing it a little upward. I'm going to get a little of my purple and red. Just while I'm here, I'm going to just make sure that my coat has a nice little edge to it. A little bit of the purple and red, our shadow color. Just a little touch, doesn't hurt us. Okay, and I think in this case, because we have enough red in it, it is okay this one one time to sign the painting in red. Let's see if I can get it done today. All right, we did it little bit of a thing. We painted wow, red. Turned out super good. So we've got another painting. I believe it is the Autumn Floral is Thursday coming up. And that's going to be a fun one if you like the flowers, acrylic April this year. If you've been wanting to do something floral. Do you want to make me big? I'm going to make you bigger here. I'm about to See, Blanton's going to get some liquid golden soon. And I think that's a good idea. I want to thank the moderators for coming out today too. Because it's like... It's a lot to do. I know it is. I know it's a lot to do. Okay. So Thursday, floral, autumn floral. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's a little bit loose. It's a little bit magical. It's a little bit fairy tale. I like it. It'll give us something light before, you know, 
we got to jump into the owl, which is going to be a deep dive. Yep. The owl, um, the reason I wanted to introduce this brush to you a little bit earlier is I am going to use a brush like this and filberts on the owl feathers. So uh, if you can, get one. Okay. Remember, you can just buy a filbert and take scissors and snip the ends and make one. So okay. you snip, don't snip, have to snip. be able to buy the <laughs> specialty brush. Thank you, Celtic Peasant. And Celtic Peasant is saying that's awesome, and I really appreciate you saying that. <sighs> Guys, I really appreciate you doing uh, this year's 13 Days of Halloween with me. I want you to be good to yourselves and be good to each other. And I'll see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.